guys, Mr. Backerberg here. Uh, we're going to finish up lesson 1.5 on graphs of functions. Three objectives for this video. Number one, we're going to look at finding things called relative maximums and relative minimums of a function. Two, we're going to find the average rate of change of a function. And then three, we're going to look at figuring out if a function is an even function or an odd function. When we're finding relative maximum and minimum values, we are going to be focusing on looking at the graphs of functions as opposed to using the equations. There is a way to find relative maximum and relative minimum values using the equation of the function, uh, but we don't have the tools necessary to do that. That's more of a calculus topic. Uh, so like I said, we are going to focus on the graphs as far as these relative maximum and minimum values go. We also sometimes call these things local maximum and minimum since we're focusing on a specific area of the graph. So what we're talking about with these relative maximum and minimum values, we're looking at these kind of peaks and valleys of our graph at these points where we have peaks, highest points. Those are going to be our relative maximum values. And at these kind of valleys, at those lowest points, those would be our relative or local minimum values. We are going to use our calculators to help us graph out this function and then find its relative maximum and minimum values. So go ahead and hit your y equals button and then type in this function right here. I am also going to change the window on my graph just to give a better picture of what this thing is going to look like. And now I'm ready to graph. So here's the picture we should get when we graph this thing out. It's a cubic function, so it's got kind of this S-shaped curve to it. We're focusing on finding the relative maximum and minimum values. So we're looking at like the top of this peak right here and the bottom of this valley. Now one thing we could do is we could just hit our trace button and arrow back and forth and try to get close, try to approximate these values. And really that's all we are doing is approximating values. Uh, we can't find the actual values without some calculus ideas. There is a better way, I think, than just hitting the trace button. If we go second trace, it'll bring up that calculate menu. And there are minimum and maximum options that we can pick. So if we look at that minimum, it's going to help us find the lowest point on this graph. So what we want to do is pick a left bound point. Now we're looking at the lowest point, so we should be focusing on this one. Left bound means we want to point to the left of that value. So I'm just going to arrow over somewhere to the left of that minimum value. Hit enter. Uh, then it asks me for a right bound point, so arrow over to the right past that value. And we can see it'll put our arrows up here, so it's going to search in that interval for the lowest point. It lets you take a guess, you don't have to do it, you can just hit enter, and it'll spit out a value right there. So at the point, point six 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 repeating, and a y value of negative 3.77 repeating, there's our local or relative minimum. We're gonna do the same thing to find this relative maximum value up here. So I'm gonna go second trace again, but this time I'm gonna select the maximum key. So again, we have to arrow over to the left past the maximum, so we're focusing on this thing. Hit enter, right bound point, so arrow over to the right past that value, hit enter. Again, it lets you take a guess, but you don't have to. Hit enter again, and it'll spit out that relative maximum value. Next thing we're taking a look at is average rate of change. Should be a topic that's pretty familiar to us because average rate of change is just the slope of a line. But with these functions that we're graphing out, most of the times these functions are nonlinear. They're not straight lines. So what we need to use to help us out is what's called a secant line. You might remember that from geometry, a secant line is a line that intersects a curve at two points. And I guess in geometry, you specifically talk about secant lines in terms of circles. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at this secant line, this line that intersects our graph at two points, and we're just going to find the slope of that line. I've got our definition of slope written up here. We're looking at m slope of our secant line. Now this notation might look a little bit confusing because it is written in function notation. But remember this f of x stuff, that's just like our y values. So this is like y2 minus 
y1 across the top, and then on bottom we've got x2 minus x1. So we're going to look at the function f of x equals x cubed minus 3x, and we're going to find the average rate of change, the slope, between the x values of negative 3 and 0. We've already got our x values, but we are going to need some y values. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug each one of these into the function. So if we look at like f of negative 3, just plug negative 3 into the function. So negative 3 cubed minus 3 times negative 3. Well, negative 3 cubed is negative 27. Negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. So we get negative 18. So for that ordered pair, we've got negative 3 negative 18. If we plug in 0, f of 0 is, well, 0 cubed minus 3 times 0. Well, we just get 0 there. So we've got the point 0, 0. So we're finding the slope between these two points, okay? negative 3, negative 18, and 0, 0. So we go with y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, double negatives all over the place turn into positives. So we've got 18 over 3, which is just 6. So the slope of the secant line is 6. Last thing we're talking about is figuring out if a function is even or odd. We're going to look at it two different ways, the first way being graphically. So we say a function is even if its graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. We say a function is odd if its graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. If you don't remember those different symmetries, you might need to go back and rewatch the video. Um, it's part two of lesson 1.2. Deals with those different symmetries. Uh, it also deals with the algebraic tests, which we're going to use also in helping us determine if a function is even or odd. Here are those algebraic tests. In order to test if a function is even, this is the same exact thing as checking if it has y-axis symmetry. We take our function, we plug in a negative x, and if we get back the original function, it means our function is even. For odd, this is our origin symmetry test. If we plug in a negative x into our function and we get back the opposite of our original function, it means that our function is odd. I'm going to run through two examples, but feel free to pause the video at any time and try these out on your own. We're looking at this function h of x equals x squared plus 1, and we're going to check if it's odd or even. So we're going to plug in that negative x. We're going to look at h of negative x. If we get back our original function, it's going to be even. If we get back the opposite of our original function, then it'll be odd. If we get back something completely different, then it's neither. So we plug in a negative x, so negative x squared plus 1, and now we work on cleaning this up. Well, when we square a negative, it becomes positive, so we get x squared plus 1, which is the exact same thing that we started with. That's our function h of x, so it means that this function is even. Last example, we're looking at function g of x being x cubed minus x. So again, plug in that negative x. So g of negative x. So we get negative x cubed minus negative x. Well, cubing a negative keeps it negative, so that's negative x cubed. Double negative here becomes a plus x. Uh, we can factor out a negative from here, which is the opposite of our original function g of x. So this function is odd. That's it as far as this video goes. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.